Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is The Piracy Show and on today's show we're going to be talking about the Dragonfly because I've had a lot of experience on the Dragonfly lately. I have been really enjoying it. However, I've made some observations, some I think some places where we can kind of tweak things, other places where things can be somewhat changed and I think we could overall make a much better experience for flying around in space bikes or driving around depending on how you view it. And driving around is one of the first things that I kind of want to address with the space bikes in general because there is kind of a problem with space bikes and that is their, the height that they ride off of the ground. Currently, it feels like when you're on the surface of a planet, it feels like the bikes ride a little too low. And I would like to see them when I'm on the surface of a planet, I would like to see them about two meters up in the air, possibly even make, you could make an exception for three, but I think two meters would be kind of ideal. Right now, the way they sit off the ground, there are just too many obstructions that get in their way. But at the same time, when you try to put these things into spaceships, all of a sudden they hop up and your head is scraping against the ceiling and getting them into a spaceship is really difficult. So I would like the ability to dynamically set the ride height to up to a maximum of three meters off the ground and down to a minimum of, of say 30 centimeters or like a foot, I don't know, whatever. I, whatever it is in freedom units so when you're actually loading it into a spaceship you don't have to worry about banging your head against the ceiling it makes it a lot easier to get into trying to get the you know the dragonfly into a freelancer is a living nightmare because of you know the rear turret it's you know it's all the little mechanical parts that go along with it more or less block the dragonfly when you're trying to get it in so you have to kind of almost like cut the engines as you're flying in and try to skid the space bike in and then trying to get it out again is just an equal nightmare. So that's one of the first things that I would like to see altered in the future version of this is that I would like to see the ride height be dynamically changed while operating the vehicle. Even, you know, it can be whatever key binds you want, but I would love to be able to use the mouse scroll wheel to scroll, you know, scroll forward to go up, scroll, you know, backwards to lower it down. So you can kind of, you know, choose what best suits the scenario because overall it's just, we're interacting with the ground far too much. And it, I feel that it really detracts from the gameplay experience. So I would love to be able to dynamically set the height. Next thing that I would like to see with the Dragonfly is the implementation of the cargo boxes on the side of the Dragonfly. Absolutely. Um, you can do it, you know, you can do it with the rock, so why can't we do it with the, uh, with the Dragonfly? I feel that that is kind of a major part of what the Dragonfly could potentially be. And I'm not just talking about myself for going out and trying to find miners who are distracted by the asteroid that they're working on so I can steal more of their cargo and hide it in my bike but also for people who just want to go out and just cruise around on their space bikes with a hand mining tool and just go out and do hand mining or something like that I feel that you know this could be a real vehicle for them and with their you know with the sensors on the bike and their tool they can get around the surface of a planet very quickly so I would like to see those cargo boxes implemented sooner rather than later. I don't think that even if it's just it highlights and you click on it and it just opens up an inventory it doesn't have to be animated. You know, it doesn't have to be spoke or, you know, be syst systemic or any, you know, it doesn't have to be any of those fancy words. It just has to work. It doesn't have to be in 3D. You know, it doesn't have to be hollow. It just has to work. That would be a, a huge thing to finally implement those cargo boxes. Even if it's not something that you physically open and place an object into, I'm cool with that. Even if you say, oh, we want to do that, but it's going to take a long time. Then in the meantime, just give us the inventory screen and just let us plock, you know, plump things or plock things down out of our inventory and just drop it into there. That would be perfectly fine for now. 
and I wouldn't complain. I'd be like, eh, well, well, we'll see the cooler version in the future, but that's fine. Just remember, it does have one SCU of storage space on the bike, just FYI. Um, next up, sensors and tracking. Um, I want to play a very quick clip of Elite Dangerous, but I want you to see this, you know, the tab and the sensors currently available on the space bike. Just drink this in for a minute. You know, you hold it down, ping, and it sends out a signal and whatever bounces back, you get to see what's going on. But I'd like to just show a, a quick clip of Elite Dangerous for a second. This is a zoom in of the ground vehicle UI or the ground vehicle sensor UI in Elite Dangerous. I would basically, I would like to see Star Citizen steal this, but make it so that those active sweeps that you're doing with the radar are something you can turn on and off, much the way that we can basically choose to ping or not to ping right now. I would just like, this is all I want. Just steal this and just give us the ability to turn it off. And so like in passive mode, you don't get as much detail, but in active mode, you get a lot more resolution. That's, you know, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just steal that. I know that UI has always been a big issue and, you know, like, oh, we're, we're going to do building blocks. And so we, you know, it's a one, you know, it's a one shot deal and it fixes everything. I get it. I get it. Cool. It's not something that I, I need right away, though sooner rather than later would be better. Um, but yeah, just steal that from Elite Dangerous. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect it's the way it should be that's what you know that's what we should have and i mean going ahead and doing that terrain mapping thing might also make landing spaceships easier from within the cockpit instead of using third person view in a first person game so i mean kind of it's like three birds with one stone there i don't know just a thought now last but not least um is something that doesn't isn't directly dragonfly related though it does impact the dragonfly and certainly will impact a lot of other space bikes well i think the nox is still kicking around out there though i don't ever see them but one of the biggest problems right now is that um if you're going out and you're riding your space bike there's basically two sets of armor that you can choose you can choose the novikov which is for cold for cold and the pembroke which is for heat I'm currently using the Pembroke, well, most of it. And somehow my helmet disappeared. <clears throat> um, fix, please. Um, but, and I used to have a Novikov set, by the way. But, you know, you have these two sets. And one of them just blanket covers all the cold environments. And the other one blanket covers all the hot environments. So, when you're thinking about what armor do you want to bring to a you know to a situation and you have limited armor storage it, at the end of the day since they both count as heavy armor you're just going to end up going around with pembrokes and um, novikovs everywhere you go for everything because they're just a one size fits all solution and i don't think that that's really a good thing for the game um i feel that Personal agency and personal expression are very, very important. I mean, personally, I will, you know, aerial I can understand because it's something of a, a much more extreme environment. But on Daymar, I don't want to fly around in a Pembroke suit. I, I want to wear something else. The Microid suit is perfect for the deserts of Daymar. Yeah, it's light and light armor, but I feel that we have to kind of separate the armor suits into environment suits and you know, combat suits. And to be perfectly honest, I think that we're a little bit too stingy on the temperatures that other suits can support. So I feel that things like the microid suit should have a much wider array of temperatures that they can support, but maybe they just don't have as much combat armor. Most of the light armor that you can get in the game, at least the stuff that I've seen, it doesn't really support the temperature variation that you're going to encounter on most of these moons, which kind of makes a lot of these, you know, armor sets that so much work went into kind of dead sets because you're never really going to bring them anywhere because it's just going to always be easier to go around in a heavy set of armor like or the Pembroke or the Novikov. So these suits and their 
perceived advantages just kind of die because you don't really have the survival time in a lot of these environments with these suits to, for them to really be good, for them really to have enough room to move around and grow. So I would kind of like to see temperature be a factor, but not be so impactful as it is currently. It's in a way, it's kind of a cool idea on paper, but the practical application of it it sucks and you know when i want to cruise around on daymar endlessly over the dunes hunting miners or something like that i you know i i want to wear a set of armor that's light you know that allows me to move quickly and stealthily and a pembroke certainly isn't that but a microid is so i feel that you know with the temperatures and moons and stuff like that maybe adding an you know some kind of an affix to the armor that's like well this is an actual environment suit and this is designed you know it's crude it's kind of cobbled together but it is it is going to keep you alive in these environments and i think that we need to apply that to a much broader set of the armors that are available in star citizen unfortunately i feel that it's it's a little too heavy-handed right now overall i think that one of the things that when you play around with this stuff you notice is that star citizen is this immense sandbox and there's certainly a lot of very promising tools with a lot of potential out there but i would like to see a little um a little time spent since we're focusing more on stability and you know issues with the live game right now apparently i would like to see some attention paid to these things because there's there's a lot in star citizen currently that has a lot of unrealized potential or a lot of potential for growth that could make some real gameplay loops out of what already exists in the game if they were given the time and attention that they need and this is just one of those little minor corners that i think really does need that attention i don't know let me know what you think in the comments below anyways thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed the video for watching so, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the star citizen and squadron 42's development please follow please follow please follow us on our social media channels see you soon